In this episode, I'll show you how to use a manual lens. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama. It's the camera store that has everything for photographers like you and me. You should check them out. They're at adorama.com. Well, on this episode, we're gonna talk about manual lenses. Now, manual lenses have been around. In fact, the original camera lenses were all manual. In other words, you had to manually select the aperture using an aperture ring, and you had to manually focus that lens as well. Now, with newer cameras, like the new uh, Leica M rangefinders, there's this new Sony a7S, there are a bunch of Micro Four Thirds cameras, there are a bunch of new video cameras that allow you to put lens adapters and throw just about any kind of lens on those cameras. Now, the advantage of that is you can put just about any kind of lens you want on your camera now, but the disadvantage is because the brands are mismatched and the technologies are mismatched, uh, you lose the ability for autofocus and the ability for the camera to automatically change the aperture value. So a lot of photographers are going to older or even newer manual lenses. In fact, this lens right here is a brand new 50 millimeter Leica lens. Uh, Nikon's got a beautiful 1.4 50mm totally manual lens. There are a lot of lenses out there that are absolutely manual. The nice thing about them, they're prime lenses. They're, they aren't zooming in and out, they're prime. They're fixed focal lengths, and that means that the optical quality is spectacular. So that's another reason a lot of photographers are using those lenses now. The question is though, how do you use them and what are all the numbers on here? Well, it's pretty easy. On all le manual lenses, there is a a dial that will allow you to change the aperture value, and that's the same as on any SLR, you're changing the aperture value in the camera, just letting you set the aperture manually. That's great if you're a videographer and you're using a manual lens on a camera like the Panasonic AF100 or a newer camera, because most of those require you to set the aperture in the lens. The other thing that's really awesome about these lenses is they have a distance and a depth of field uh, gauge right here. And so uh, what that allows you to do is see how far away you're focusing and how much you're focusing. Remember, when we focus, we don't just focus at a distance, we focus at a distance and a depth. And so on this lens, I can see that maybe I'm focusing at six feet, but I can also see how much is going to be in focus before I ever press the trigger. Now to really be clear on the distance and depth of focusing, I've asked a couple of models to come and help me out. And so we have Daniela and Carolina from Colombia, and they're gonna help me show you the distance and depth difference. So let's do that right now. All right, now that Daniela and Carolina are in place, and my Spanish is horrible, but excuse me for not saying your names right, but now that they're in place, we're gonna show you how you can not only focus for distance, but for depth as well. So what we're gonna show you here is that Daniela is about six feet from the camera. So I focused right at six feet, just under two meters. And then back here, Carolina is at about 12, maybe 15 feet. So with our aperture wide open, our depth of field is really shallow. So let's shoot that picture first, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So we're looking right here, perfect. Make sure I'm in focus. All right, so now we have one person that's in focus. Now I'm gonna change my depth of field by changing my aperture. I'm gonna make my aperture really small by going to F16. And now I'll take the same exact picture. And now look, everybody's in focus from start to finish. So we went from a depth of field that was really shallow right here all the way to a depth of field that started here and went all the way back here. So we've got lots of focus. Hey, before we continue, I wanna remind you that Adorama has some awesome photography contests. It's absolutely free to participate and you can win some great prizes. So click the link and enter today. All right, well, let me show you exactly how a manual lens works. This is a Leica 21 millimeter F3.4 lens. This is one of my favorite manual lenses. Now on this lens and all manual lenses, there is a, an aperture ring that lets you adjust the aperture value, just like you would on an SLR. Instead of looking through the lens and doing that, you just do it right on the lens itself. And then it also has a focus uh, ring and that will show you exactly how far the focus is. So maybe you're at four feet or eight feet or 15 feet, whatever it is. And then below that on most uh, lenses, there's a depth of field guide. And you can look and see if I'm focusing maybe at, at eight feet at uh, F3.4, F8, whatever you're at, exactly how far you are in focus by the numbers on the side of the lens. And if you change the aperture value, you'll see that you get even more depth of field. And so you can just look at the lens and see how far you're focusing and then how far the depth of field is. So you can see distance and depth all at the same time. 
For example, if I set my focus here to eight feet and then set my aperture value to eight, we can see on the depth of field scale that I'll be in focus just beyond three feet, so about three and a half feet, all the way over here to the other side of just past infinity. Or if I went to F16, you would see that we're starting our depth of field over here at just about two feet, all the way, way beyond infinity. Or if you wanted the opposite of that, I could go to, let's say, 3.4 at about four feet. And now you can see we'll be in focus just beyond three feet, so about three and a quarter feet, all the way over here to about five feet. So we can see exactly how much is going to be in focus. Now the nice thing about that is you can preset your lens, the focus and the depth, and this is called zone focusing. So you're saying, hey, I want to shoot at about eight feet away. So you set this at eight feet and you want to have everything in focus from, oh, let's say about uh, four feet all the way to infinity. So you just set it at F8 and you can look on your depth of field gauge and see exactly how much is in focus. Once that's set, you can put your camera and your lens together and then you can walk around and anything you see that's about eight feet away, you just take a button and you click it, your shutter button, and that picture is going to be in focus. And that's awesome. If you're a street photographer, you can set your lens up in advance and as you're walking through the city, you can just take pictures without ever having to look through the lens or through the rangefinder. You can just point and shoot and you're gonna get photos that are in focus as long as you're about eight feet away. Now, if you're a photojournalist or maybe a sports photographer or a wedding photographer, you can basically do the same thing. If you're a sports photographer, maybe you would uh, set the distance from your camera to the end zone or maybe the finish line, or whatever it is, and then set your depth of field so you have some leeway. So a little bit of leeway so maybe if you don't get it at exact the right moment, you're in focus a little bit before and after that finish line or the end zone or whatever it is or where the wedding is taking place, you get the idea. Now, the benefit of that is it's actually faster than an autofocus lens because there is no focusing involved. Once you have it set up, you can take a picture and bam, the picture is in focus. And I've got a bunch of great pictures using this technique, this zone focusing technique from uh, all over South America, specifically street photography, because really nobody knows I'm taking a picture because I'm not even looking at my camera. A lot of people say that's cheating. I say it's getting some great pictures, but you can decide. Well, that's how you use a manual lens. It's something I really love doing. And once you start using these, I think you'll find that the ease of use is really terrific and the picture quality is superior to what you might get with a zoom lens. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Exploring Photography. Don't forget that you can subscribe to Adorama TV